Welcome back, friends. Today, I drove all the way to Coon Rapids, Minnesota, a tiny little town that I've never been to before. I'm very excited to be shown the town to go skating with a guest that I discovered on the internet. He doesn't skateboard. He does something way cooler than that. He makes music, but he also rides Heelys. So welcome to the show, Healy Sensation, James G. Yeah, thanks for having me. Dude, musician sensation. Your fanny pack <laughs> song I was vibing to this morning when I was drinking so- uh, drinking coffee. That's very nice. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So in your own words, who are you and what are you passionate about? Um, I'm a semi-professional healer who makes hip hop music and uh, I'm passionate about, I'd say just like entertainment in general. Um, I love, I love coming up with ideas and, and doing the Healy's bit and everything like that. And I also just love making music and uh, going on the road and performing. Dude. So what does it mean to be a semi-professional healer? Like what, it, cause I understand like a semi-professional skateboarder, they get paid, they travel with the team. They're like on their website as amateurs, but they don't have like their name on a board. So they're not technically pro. What is it to be semi-pro for a healer? That's a great question. I kind of made it up. Sick, so, dude. <laughs> I changed so. the link in my bio <laughs> and I was like, semi-pro healer an artist and producer because before i just had like a coupon code for healies and i'm like mm. i want to take a stand and, and kind of inch towards music a little bit and so yeah. i just changed it to that and people latched on and they're like semi-pro and then i was like i kind of just ran with it i had Dude. to yeah so i'm waiting to be called out for this because i'm gonna throw on the podcast right now i just changed my bio to say number one podcast in wisconsin i noticed that actually right away yeah like if you don't agree that's fine was it based on anything real no but I want to take it. Well, yeah. I, I, I uh, was listening to, so there's two main skateboarding podcasts, right? There's the nine club. And then there's this one called the bunt live. The nine club is the bigger one. Everyone mm-hmm. knows it's the bigger one. Um, but the bunt live has still had like all the major pros pretty much. It's these two dudes in Canada and it's dope. And it's mm-hmm. like a little less censored It is really good. But in it from the beginning, their intro, I'd always said the number one podcast in skateboarding. And so the people from the nine club always were kind of like, I don't know if that's based on anything. They finally had the the Bunt Live dudes on the show Mm -hmm. and they asked them about that. And their answer inspired me. They're like, why do you call yourself the number one podcast in skateboarding? Just curious. They're kind of like poking. Mm -hmm. And the dude just goes, why wouldn't we? And I was like, wow. And he was basically coming from the standpoint of like, if you ask an NFL player, which team is the best, they're going to say they are like every time. You know what I mean? And I was like, yeah. I think I do have the best podcast in Wisconsin. Even if it's not, I think it will be the best podcast in Wisconsin. If you don't agree, then you probably don't listen anyways. So whatever, maybe I'll piss some people off. But by putting number one podcast in Wisconsin, that catches people's eye a little bit when they see my profile and they're like, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. And maybe they'll doubt it. Maybe they'll hate me. Maybe they won't. But I think it works. And I'm going to run with it for a while unless somebody really shuts me down. If Quick Trip tells me, hey, we, we're not going to deal with you if you keep saying that, then maybe I won't. But until then, <laughs> I'm going to be the number one in all of Wisconsin. I'd say do it. It'll make people look you up for sure. They'll mm-hmm. look at your your different platforms and everything like that. I'd say, yeah, run with it. Let me know how it goes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So all of your platforms, your James makes music, but not on everything, right? There's some that you're James G on Spotify, you're James G. Give us where can, every, where can everybody, where can people find all of your different things? Yes. So social media, I'm at James makes music. Um, across all of the social media, Facebook's a little different. It's James G music. There's another James makes music. Um, mm. But so just Facebook. Otherwise, it's all James Makes Music in terms of handles. And then on uh, music platforms, it's James G, all one word. If you search James Makes Music on the music platforms, what happens? It doesn't, fi- you can't find you from that? Um, It works on everything, I think, but Apple. Oh, okay. Because on Spotify, I made a playlist that's like James Makes Music. Um, and my profile is oh, that. But then my artist page is James G. So it kind of comes together that way. Sure. Um, yeah. A little bit of a, a flaw in my um, brand. <laughs> in brand. The- um, yeah in the marketing strategy for everything you have a great marketing strategy dude i think it's really important like you have to find some way to stand out and healy's works dude and like obviously it works and you playing on the moniker of like is he serious is he not serious like clearly it is a marketing thing but the fact that you're able to do it and like have fun with it and not like like take it seriously i don't know the angle that you're doing it works really well and i appreciate it because most people take themselves way too seriously all the time yeah, I do not at all. Yeah, I yeah. think <laughs> if you can laugh at yourself, I think that's why people love celebrities when they go on like uh, Saturday Night Live and stuff, right? It's because these people, it's like, oh, they can laugh at themselves. That makes them more likable to me. Right. So where are you at right now with music? You put out a album, maybe? No? And you're um, touring? What's, what's, what is going on currently with the music? With music? Uh, so I've just tried to k- stay as consistent as possible while not having to sacrifice quality. Yeah. And so typically I've been trying to release one song a month every single month. And I've done that for 
oh gosh, like a year and a half. Oh, okay. Um, and before that, I was a little more sporadic. But once I decided I wanted to take this full time, I started doing it a song a month, except for like December's typically I take off and I um, try to just kind of reset for the next year. Uh, but I'm planning on doing that indefinitely um, until there's more of a demand for an album. A yeah. lot of people know me just for healing, which is awesome. And I'm very grateful, but um, I want to build up more demand for like an album um, before I put that out there because it's a lot of extra time work and it's a lot harder to market. Yeah. Whereas like a single, it's one piece. If you have like 10, 15 tracks and you're trying to just market that all as a whole, sometimes the message kind of gets diluted. So Yeah. Well, I, th I mean, it's hard, right? Because it's a way oversaturated market. So is social yes. media. But you found something that you're the only one, not the only, but is a very few people that are healing, you know yes. what I mean? Online and like creating content in that type of way. So you stand out just by doing it in the first place. But there's like a million people that make music. And there's yes. a lot of people that are influencers on the internet that are making music that like the numbers don't necessarily translate. It's really hard to be able to do that successfully. Does it bother you at all or get under your skin when you're like, I didn't really take that much time to create the video and the video goes viral for the healing when you're like, what I really want is for you to listen to the song that I made. And like, that's the point when that, when you don't see that same success crossover, does it get under your skin or how do you, how do you stay positive through that? Um, it doesn't necessarily, I've, I've kind of come to terms with it, right? Like it's, it's being able to step outside of yourself and your ego and just look at it like with like a marketing lens. And like, when I think about it, I'm like, people are just scrolling and they see me rolling around and they like it it's not like instantaneously they're going to like to the point where they're going to jump over and find all my music. It's like, you kind of got to foster those relationships. And so, um, it's definitely challenging at times. And sometimes it's like, ah, I just wish it, it would convert better. But at the end of the day, it's like, I know it's a, it's a long game. It's a marathon. And so I just kind of remember that and just keep trying to find ways to incorporate my music without like selling my music, I guess, per se. Yeah. Well, I think it's really hard to sell music in general, right? Like you get paid from making appearances, going to shows, selling merch, but selling the music itself. Like how many people buy an album? Well, right. Like, when was last time? And selling music, even like in terms of just like getting, trying to get people to listen to it. Right? Well, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Like yeah, selling time. their time and attention. Well, right, because yeah. no one likes to be sold to, especially with how right. many advertisements kind of mm -hmm. exist in today's day and age, day to day. It's like, hey, check it out, check it out, check it out. Like yeah. that doesn't work. Whereas if I can kind of get people's attention and they like me as a person, maybe through healing and contents and just hopefully just kind of like being myself, hopefully sure. they'll want to find the music and then it's a lot easier of a, a sell, I guess, per yeah. se. I think you kind of have to just accept what works too. You know, in like the, the day and age that it is, that's why songs are two minutes now instead of five minutes, yep. right? Is because it's like, well, it's easier to get somebody to click on a two minute song because it's a less, less of a commitment. It's yep. the same way with like the full length episodes of my show. I like very much understand that way, way, way fewer people are going to actually sit and watch the full length episode of the show on YouTube. Yep. There are people that do, but the vast majority of people who are, have any awareness of me or anything I do saw a random clip on the internet somewhere. Yep. You know what I mean? And like, that's how they like to consume it. Yeah. Like I had a couple of different people come into my store, um, last weekend because they saw a clip where I was talking about this ring I found, uh, in Hawaii, like in the ocean. Oh, it was nice. like real gold, like found it in the ocean. It was dope, right? Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. And th that clip did better than most. They came in specifically just cause they wanted to see it, but they did tell me they didn't watch the episode. Mm -hmm. They just like saw that clip and they're like, but I will. And I'm like, I don't know if you will, but maybe let's, <laughs> let's go back and talk a little bit more about who you are as a person. I know obviously you've kind of like told people through other shows and everything, but a lot of people who are going to listen to this haven't necessarily listened to other podcasts. Sure. So I try not to ask the same questions, but there are some base levels of like, we kind of got to give a little bit of it. So can you kind of summarize generally like your story up? Keep it real brief. Obviously we'll go into more detail about things, but give us like a general summary. Yeah, sure. So in terms of like how I got here, like professionally or just like life or let's what talk about think? life first. Like I know you're from your family's from uh, Bar no Rice Lake, Northern Wisconsin, Rice Lake area. Yep, yeah. Northwest Wisconsin moved yeah. around. How did you end up in Coon Rapids where you are now? Yeah. So um, went to I grew up in like St. Cloud. A lot of my family lives in like the Rice Lake, Wisconsin area. Um, yeah. But my dad got a job in St. Cloud, Minnesota, which is central Minnesota. Grew up there. Uh, went to high school in Soccer Rapids right next to there graduated went to Duluth for college worked up there for a couple of years what and you then to school for I went to school for communication business and philosophy oh cool those yeah. all translate really well actually yeah it actually it's kind of like a weird combo but it, it made me feel well-rounded and yeah. philosophy it was like 15 credits for like a minor and so mm -hmm. I was like I took two classes loved it and just took the last three yeah um 
but doing music i just felt like duluth was a little bit limiting just because there's not a lot of touring acts that make it up there and a lot of it's just playing the same venues for the same people which i loved and i'm grateful for that time but i just wanted to be in a bigger market so we yeah. moved to the twin cities in 2019 um and then we bought a house in coon rapids in 2021 sure. you could just get more house here and um right. i wanted and it's a very nice area we love it here so yeah but i'm yeah, I don't know. You, I guess your music career at that point, you said you moved here in 2019. You weren't really, I mean, you've always made music your whole life, but yep. were you at the point where you felt like you outgrew Duluth already at that point? Or was it just like you knew the direction you wanted to go, it was just going to be too limiting? It's a little bit of both. So I started making music under James G in 2012. Um, oh, okay. And um, kind of taught myself how to produce, engineer, everything like that. And um, I'd say like right around 2015 and 2016, like mid to late college years. And then until I moved out of Duluth, I was playing a show at least once a month, sometimes two times a month. And so oh. even though my online presence with music wasn't super big, I was doing a lot of concerts. And I just kind of saw that it was it was very repetitive. It's trying to get my same friends to come see the same set right. month after month and stuff like that. And I just realized at the same venues too and i'm like i just want to be in a bigger pool where maybe there's opportunities to open for national acts and there's things along those lines i can make more connections because there's a lot more artists down here um and that's kind of what the mindset was yeah yep. yeah i mean a lot of it just is who you know what what was the music like at that time frame was has it always been the hip-hop music that you make now i mean it obviously has grown and evolved but like was it always that genre yeah, I mean, I've experimented. I've had uh, different monikers um, and made different types of music. Hip hop and James G has always been that. Okay. Um, they've always been connected. And sometimes it gets a little poppy and, and stuff like that. Sure. But um, otherwise, I've done some acoustic guitar and like piano music. Um, some more like, I don't know, like lo-fi, like bedroom pop type stuff. Oh, cool. um, I try to make a wide variety just to like keep yeah. my chops up. But how do you, how do you like, so with marketing, um, the Healy is obviously like a great marketing tool and it's just fun. And we'll talk more about that. Um, mm -hmm. but in order to have the song translate, you have to make something that fits with that online persona, but that online persona with the Healy's and everything like that is more so it is you, but it's more so like, this is from a marketing standpoint. I don't feel like that would always align music wise with what you want to create. And I feel like you'd, you would want to try to make that music fit that moniker more to have it translate better. But do you feel limited because of that? Do you find yourself in that position where you're like, I don't really want to like play this character all the time. Um, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Um, but I don't know, like there, there's some people that have made it work that I've kind of like watched their career blossom. And that's where I kind of find inspiration. Like one person I think of uh, that sticks out right away is Oliver Tree. Yeah. yeah. So he makes um, like kind of like meme content and he does scootering and he has this whole like outfit. Cut, yeah. Bowl cut. And, but his music is very serious most mm. of the time. And I mean, the videos are kind of light and fun. And sometimes they are very serious. Just depends on the angle you're kind of watching from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he makes it work. And yeah. so that's kind of where I'm at, where I'm like, I feel like I'm a little more liberated to make different types of music and put them out there and still just like have the Heelys be a part of it and not necessarily a focal point. And that's been what I've been trying to do, I guess, as of late. And um, it's been kind of working, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely been working. Things have been taking off. I've seen you on my page quite a few times before I followed you. Like That's I just cool. it kept popping up and I had no idea you were in Minnesota. So which was like way better when I found that out. No kidding. Um, yeah. But no, you had popped up on my screen quite a few times. How did you come up with the character? It is you, but it's obviously. So I, I was in sales for a very long time. Yep. And when I would interview people in sales, I would describe to them like the person that you're playing when you clock in is you with the volume turned up not just talking louder, but everything you're more eccentric, like everything you have to be more personal, personable than you typically would be. And that's kind of yep. how it has to be with the internet. How did you develop James G the, the online persona? Um, I, I don't really know. I kind of thought about it. So like Helian kind of started a little bit, um, just like along the lines of like people skateboard and skateboarding culture and like hip hop culture are kind of, there's like a correlation there. Yeah. And so I was like, my music's kind of like hip hop adjacent, like what's adjacent to skateboarding that not a lot of people are doing. And I was like healing, that'd be kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of just took that, um, and then thought about like, what's like the stereotypical healier would be, I guess. Like, you know, you think of like a skater and like what people think skaters are, not necessarily what they are, but what, what people think they are. And like healing was kind of that similar thing. Sure. Um, so I just kind of thought about that. And then um, 
I like sketch comedy. I've watched like like Kyle Mooney, like Kyle Mooney, and like some of those guys. I watched a lot. Which if you watch his videos, like from way back, you can sure. see like the inspiration in mine. Um, and so it was kind of that, and that kind of came together. Yeah. What about your outfits and everything? Do you dress specifically to try to fit what that vibe would be? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> no. you're only 20 nine right so like, no, that's that's how i dress for real i don't yeah like a lot of a lot of what you see on the internet is like really me just the characters like i like to say it's just me like very watered down yeah sure. like it's just like because that's my sense of humor like i some of the stuff that i like write and like come up with i think is funny and i laugh at myself which is kind of embarrassing but sure. um no what you see is kind of what you get do just, you do comedy stuff outside of that like have you ever done stand-up or do you have any interest in doing any kind of stand-up or sketch-based comedy outside of like the because right now you pretty much are using it to promote a brand maybe if you're working with them but to promote music pretty much exclusively you're not like on youtube putting out five minute skits all the time you right. know what i mean is that like an area of interest of yours or not really yeah it would be um i think music is definitely like my number one love mm -hmm. but um like when i do like live performances and perform music it kind of walks the line of comedy because i'm just very open and honest like if i screw something up i'll just admit that i screw it up right in the middle of the song i'll just quit and go you know ah, i screwed up sorry everybody yeah or i'll say this is gonna be bad but hopefully you guys are ready you know like sure. i play those games and so um I would definitely explore it. It's just more of like a time commitment issue, yeah. I'd say more than anything. Yeah. Well, what does your time look like currently? Self-employed and you do, I, I guess I'd love to hear more of what you do outside of the healing and your own music because we all do other things to float it. You know, like I do, I do the show. Everyone sees that. Finally, this is the first episode where I'm talking about it. I'm finally closing my skateboard shop, passion board shop. It didn't fail. I made it over 10 years. I'm just so busy with everything else. And there's like a myriad of reasons I could talk for hours. But one of the bigger ones is skateboard shops are only busy when kids aren't in school. And I'm a single dad and I want to spend as much time as I possibly can with my children. Right. And so as time went on, it was like I would have employees there more and more often when my kids were outside of school. Well, when I wasn't at the shop, it naturally didn't get as much support because people didn't see the owner there. Right. You know, when I opened, I was 23 and I had a one year old and like what time of day I worked was irrelevant. Now my kids are seven and 11. I want to be able to be with them every weekend and mm -hmm. take them and go do stuff. And it just like doesn't really fit the life that I live and I, it, my schedule doesn't really allow it anymore. So it was finally time, finally pulling the plug, um, which is sad, but I feel good about it. You know, 10 years is a good run. Did yeah, a lot congrats. of awesome That's stuff. Awesome. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I'm, I'm very proud of everything that we did, but anyways, I made my income from that. I make my income from art opportunities like painting murals, but I also paint custom footwear, which we should do some, uh, some Heelys. That'd be dope. I yeah, could, I could cool. paint you some custom ones. It'd be dope. Um, but anyways, like I, I paint shoes and stuff. Um, I do stuff, uh, like promotion with like other companies like reverb music festival that's coming up August 16th and 17th. I made their like little character, no, that's like super their cool. little mascot. And I painted him like eight feet tall for them to have at the festival. <laughs> that's um, super sweet. So I make income from like a various, like several things and that all kind of like builds up to make it like something that I can float. Mm -hmm. How does your time look on a general like week? How much of it goes into healing skit videos? How much of it goes into making your own music? What other things do you do and how much time goes into those things? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I would say that the majority of my time probably at this point, I mean, it definitely varies week to week, but I try to like make it, I'd say at least half of my time goes into music because I do all the production, writing, recording, engineering, album art, and that just takes a lot of time and i try to crank out like three songs a month and so I'd say about half my time goes there probably a quarter of it goes into like healing uh just going out and filming and then the editing takes quite a bit of time more so i would say yeah um and then other things that I do um, that probably make up that last bit is um, I do some DJing. I just have a sound system and I just play music. Um, I've been doing it for like after school programming. Oh, cool. And so they'll have like parent events and I'll just come in and play some like kids bop songs and, Sick, yeah. you know, run some games and stuff like that. Um, I've done a little bit of um, like web developments. Uh, I made my own website um, just using Wix. I don't know how to like code yeah. per se, but like I know how to like run and maneuver those quite well. And so um, do a little bit of that. Um, I'm trying to think. A lot of just like odd jobs like that more than anything um, that all kind of walk that realm or are in that realm of like music entertainment marketing. Yeah. Um, so I just try to find kind of odd jobs in there to help uh, get by. Have you tried to work with other people a whole lot? I find with myself that it's a, a big challenge. I like being a lone wolf or I like being in charge of everything because I'm the only one disappointing myself. You know, I'm the only one who's failing. If somebody else fails me. I feel like a jerk for being upset about it, but I also then feel stupid for depending on other people. It just, 
it's more stressful for me to work with other people the majority of the time. Obviously, I still work with other people. Like right. we're working together at the moment. But yep. generally speaking, like, you know, working with editors or working with uh, whatever. For me, it's just easier to kind of do it all myself. But I know it holds me back in some regards. But at the same time, I think it's really hard to create the best product if it's not your own voice that's creating all of it. You right. know what I mean? If you're outsourcing things. So like, yeah, I don't know. Like, have 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 you tried to work with other people? Do you want to work with other people? Do you like the situation that you have? Where are you at with it? Um, that's a good question. I'd think it's kind of like a two part answer. Like where I currently stand, I like doing everything because where things are at, I'm able to manage it all. I mean, it's a lot of work and a lot of time, but I'm happy and I enjoy doing the large majority of it. I mean, yeah. some of the days I really wish I had someone who could edit because it's like I'll sit and edit videos for six hours straight and I'm like feels like such a waste but it is worth it and then you know i try to get ahead as much as possible so i'd say like right now i'm happy um with what i'm doing but if things continue to grow which hopefully they will um and i start to make more money to where i can afford comfortably to have some people you know maybe do some of the stuff especially some of the stuff that's like um like pretty basic and doesn't take a lot of like like there's no creative direction right like there's certain things um that you do that like it's just it's just the time like mm -hmm. uploading clips into the certain softwares and then just chopping it up and and different things um like that like i wouldn't mind if someone did that but, but i feel like you learn so much from that though oh yeah right? because you're like yeah. watching every little thing that you do repeatedly so that helps you see where you could be improving in general like with your own criticism i think it helps a lot from that oh, but it helps you be more creative because you're seeing what things you didn't realize were monotonous that you're doing mm -hmm. you know what i mean like editing my own show my own show I realized how often I used to say, sure, sure. Oh, like, sure. I, I didn't know that before that. But once <laughs> I started doing it, I was like, oh, wow, I need to not do that anymore. So I feel like if you start eliminating that, it, it's kind of hard to you, you make it a well-oiled machine, but then it almost has to stay stagnant because you're not addressing every little part of it to see where you can improve from every little part. Agreed. You know what I mean? Yeah. To, to like a, a certain degree. Um, not only that, but that's a ton of pressure then. You know, like it sucks as it is to not have like consistent income being self-employed that's like one of the biggest stressors that yeah, there is is absolutely. like money could be gone at any point in time and mm -hmm. you're always waiting like i hope this company that agreed to pay me actually pays me on time because i need to blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> but when you have other people to pay that's like a whole nother pressure right you know what yeah. i mean like the success has to be more than i don't know i guess i'm at that point of like I feel good about where I'm at with it. Would I love to hand some things off? Maybe like management or something like that. To yeah, like help with that was another ads. one I was thinking of too. Yeah. Like sometimes social media management because I try to respond to everyone and yeah. sometimes you just get inundated and if it hits, if the algorithm sends it to the wrong crowd, it's just a lot of like yeah. hate and sometimes it's like, oh, I have to respond to 300 people that are all mad yeah. at me for healing and I'm like, oh, it's going to be, dude, it's going to be a long day, yeah. but you yeah. just power through and it's, yeah. it's all good. I mean, it, I'm grateful to have like eyes on what I'm doing. Approximately how many songs are out there that you've made? Um, I think I'm at 60. Oh, okay. How many of them have music videos? Just like two or three of them. Why not? I mean, it's a lot of work, but I would think with your visuals being such a big part of what you do with social media that like the music video game would be something you'd be on. Yeah, it's something I, I hope to get on um, mm -hmm. a little bit more. I just I've been really focused on short form because I feel like that's the best way to get like discovered. And so I guess like if you include like short form promotions, like pretty much all of the songs have something. Yeah. Um, but like full blown music videos, it's just a lot of work. And I feel like it's one of those things like with an album where I'm trying to like build up that audience to where a music video comes out and there will be people there kind of waiting for it hoping for it and then hopefully resonating with it and so sure yeah so how does one make a living like obviously you work with sponsors and stuff i think well i found you just through the just like explore page a million times um <laughs> but when i saw that you were working with quick trip as well because quick trips a sponsor of the show and mm -hmm. they're rad and those chips people keep asking me about those chips they are legitimately good i'm not they just saying good. it they actually are good they're i good actually with enjoyed coffee. them a yes. lot yes. i ate almost the whole bag and was like i feel <laughs> gross now but they are actually good but anyways so clearly you must work with quick trip to some capacity does yep. a lot of your income come from like sponsorships and stuff or does a lot of it come from selling your own merch online or like kind of how does that work with you yeah it's it's a it's kind of a lot of different pieces of the pie for sure and so there's sponsorships like yeah i work with quick trip um i've worked with other companies on some one-off things um yeah. instagram has some like ad revenue stuff and so that's worked at times and i've gotten that um doing some of the side gigs so like djing live performances merch uh some royalties from streaming services um yeah just kind of a wide commission with certain you know products things like that it's 
it's kind of a hodgepodge of things. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as easy as people like people assume, oh, you have a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. You must be just making a killing. It's like, no, no, <laughs> not really. Unfortunately, I'm trying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What are some dream sponsors that you would love to work with? We don't got them yet. We're going to get them. Oh gosh. I don't even know. Like I think PBR, Paps Blue Ribbon would be one for sure. Yeah, um, dude. That is like my beer of choice if I'm drinking like a lighter beer. Yeah. Um, so I'd say like some sort of like beer sponsor would be cool. Um, and then I don't even know, like I like um, like obscure like sponsors that don't really fit like what I'm doing. Sure. Right. Like 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 uh, granted, there's only like one Healy's company, but like um, like other clothing sponsors would be cool. I don't really have any off the top of my head or like um like I always see like like big um, companies like locally that I'd like to work with. So like yeah. Nicolay Law, like I see the like the billboards all over and like, sure, yeah. you know, I did a song um, for Quick Trip that played at the gas pumps. It's like maybe I make a song for them to use in commercials or That'd something like that. Yeah. 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 Like I'm always like looking for things like that um, where it's like it doesn't really make sense with what I'm doing, but we can make it make sense. And sure. I think that's part of the fun. How much of a percentage of the work that you do, the stuff that you get paid for are things that you had to reach out and really try to get versus people reaching out to you um i'd say i need to get a lot better at reaching out to people Same. so i'd say a lot of it is people reaching out to me but that doesn't mean that it's just done so typically you know i've had companies reach out like quick trip the way we got connected is someone yeah. tagged them they were just in the background of one of my videos and it was unintentional oh sure and then i said hey let's collab lol and they dm'd me and said hey pitch us your ideas and yeah. one thing led to another and now it's partnership and so it's like they reached out to me technically but i still had to like put in that work to um kind of pitch them and then now it's a, a fun healthy partnership so. yeah yeah i think people they don't realize how much work goes into all that stuff you mm -hmm. know like um news stories is an example so ed the diver was a guest on the show i think it was episode 145 ed is the man and he's everyone's gonna know him he's gonna be way bigger than he currently is and he's already pretty big um he was visiting eau claire uh and i was diving with him we were like cleaning up the waterways like that's his whole channel everyone mm -hmm. needs to go check it out um but anyways he was in town we were out the night before we we're gonna go diving again so that morning when i was drinking my coffee i was like cool he's not doing it i'm gonna pitch so i sent like went to the news news lines like all the different uh news channels like you know actual uh tv channels but then the different newspapers and everything and i emailed all of them with like a quick pitch of this is who this dude is why it's like important to catch him while he's in town he's never been here before i also did an interview with him and like here's the contact information this is his instagram this is his blah 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 and then you know three hours later the local newspaper is taking pictures of us while we're putting our scuba gear on and getting in the water and now that's on the front page of the newspaper today right that's right super cool and it's because i did that work though yep you know what i mean i was like unabashedly like well i'm not gonna wait around for people to find me like i have to let people know and i run into times where people are like oh man all you ever do is talk about yourself these are people that don't like me there's plenty of people that do like <laughs> me i'm aware I'm, I'm not that like i'm not that sad for myself but um i get that from people like man you're so egotistical and it's like well no i just promote what i do because people aren't going to find me if i don't promote what i do right like agreed. that is how that works you have to be willing to promote your own work and people need to understand like i'm just working hard like don't, you work hard at your job too. Your job just doesn't involve marketing yourself, you know, but the, like, that's what I'm doing. If right. I wasn't marketing my job, then like, yeah, I wouldn't be posting on Instagram all the time and talking about these, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't be promoting myself in that kind of way, it's, but that your is, job part, is of like part of you. Right. right. Has yeah. that been hard for you to incorporate in your life without feeling like you're like egotistical? Cause you, you have to do it. It's a little bit tricky. Like I, and I don't like, like being the center of attention personally right. like i do like when i'm supposed to be right like if i'm at, if i'm performing at a concert i love being the center of attention because hopefully people came there to see that and so like yeah. it's a lot of fun for me but otherwise yeah it's it's typical or it's uh challenging rather um day to day just to like be promotional but it's like also if you don't do that no like no one really cares and no one owes you anything so it's like you kind of have to try to make that name for yourself uh because no one else is going to do it for you and so definitely a little bit of a challenge but um something that you just have to do if you want to be self-employed, you know, in the face of your own brand. Yeah. I like the way that you do it comes across very differently anyways, because you're just making funny stuff, more of a like brand awareness idea. And people will then go listen to your music. You know what I mean? Because yep. they like, so I think the way that you do it is clever. Um, but no matter what, as you're doing stuff on the internet, you have to deal with a lot of trolls mm -hmm. and yours. Like, I gotta think most people realize you're intentionally being funny. 
like but not everyone will see that especially with dry humor they're just gonna be like look at this idiot you yeah. know what i mean have how have you uh developed thick skin for that because that's been like an ongoing challenge for me um well first off i'll just say i'm actually very fortunate to have most people in in on what i'm doing yeah um where it's like it's serious but it's not serious it's funny but it's like not like it's it's kind of one of those things and a lot of people get it and there's a lot of people that just truly support it and even if the comments are sarcastic like we're on the same page and we're having fun sure and so i think i just try to keep that in the back of my mind as like you really shouldn't even have this much like ongoing support as you do for like what you're doing and how long you've done it like sure. i should have a lot more people that hate on what i do um but I mean, you just, I don't know if people are, are commenting negative things online and, and, and hate you and they don't even really know you, like there's probably other things going on. So I just try to remember like there are people too. And oftentimes I'll either just like comment something sarcastic back. I'll delete it sometimes if it's crossing into some territory I don't want to be in. Yeah. Um, or I'll just ignore it. And I don't know. I think it's just important to like realize that like people are just seeing a glimpse of you for 10 seconds and they're making an immediate judgment that doesn't necessarily reflect on who you are as a person. So you just got to. I don't know, be confident enough in yourself and also just a little bit of like, I have some empathy, I guess, for the people. Yeah, I guess I think it's a little bit hard for me because inherently what I do is like, I'm very opinionated on the internet. Like I'm interviewing other people, but obviously I'm talking at length, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And posting clips and stuff based on my experiences, my knowledge base and my opinions. Sure. So no matter what you say, people aren't necessarily going to agree with your opinions. Yep. And I know it's best to interact on every single comment, like if possible, but like is exhausting. You know what I mean? Right. Especially on something like YouTube or whatever, where like a YouTube short gets a bunch of views and those people don't subscribe to you necessarily. So you just get like, and then if, if I comment, then I end up having them comment back and it becomes like a, which I know is good for the algorithm, but it's also really mentally exhausting. So yes. I'm not, I feel like I haven't found my good balance of like this time of day, I'm going to go into it for 45 minutes and deal with it. And that's what works. Like I'm still figuring it out. Right. Well, and sometimes it's important, I think just to like find balance and like decide whether or not it's worth it. Cause sometimes if you're inundated with like negativity, there's some people like some people say negative stuff and then I'll comment back to them and say something sarcastic. They're like, I was just kidding. Love the stuff, which is like kind of a weird approach, but like sometimes it goes that way. But some people you're just never going to win. Right. You respond back and they just basically reiterate the stupid thing they said first. And at that point, I usually just move on because yeah. I'm like, I'm not really helping myself. If sure. anything, some of my supporters might see this and be like, "Ooh." James is like really getting into it with this person yeah. and it might like tarnish my reputation, even though I'm, you know, they started it, but sometimes right, it's yeah. like, you just got to be the bigger person. And I try to find that line, which that's a day by day challenge. But sure. yeah. So when you are feeling like you're a little bit burnt out, how do you recharge? How do you recognize when it is time to take a break? It, it, it varies by like task. I'd say like socially, um, I just try to like do activities where I'm not, on my phone as much or on my phone for those reasons so like yeah if i need a break from social media like sometimes it's just doing things around the house it's mowing the lawn um i like disc golfing and golfing so i'll go out and do those i do some rec sports i'm in a kickball league and a hockey oh, league so like i try to just stay active and busy outside of the internet because mm -hmm. otherwise it's really easy to just get trapped in that especially self-employed working from home you know um yeah. So that's, that's what I do in terms of social media. Yeah. yeah. Well, cause I mean, you can always be working more. Yes. So it's really hard to draw the line of like, this is, this is enough work for right now. Yeah. It's very, very tough, but, um, uh, camping is another one, like on yeah. the weekends having plans too. So I don't just work through the weekends. Sure. I mean, oftentimes we have to film and stuff, but, right. um, just to get a break from that internet stuff, I like to do things outside. Yeah. Well, as you learn things, you kind of like it's, there's always these challenges in front of you. And as you're kind of working on it, you figure out this little tip that worked on this thing. And then you're trying to figure out this next thing and you're kind of going, you know what I mean? Like as an example, to, to give you a frame of reference, when I was trying to figure out how to do captions better, yep. right? Taking captions took me four forever and then finally i found an app that i actually liked that i could brand it and do it right and i was like cool that problem took me a little while to solve but now i solved it and i can move on to the next thing mm -hmm. what was the last challenge or problem that you were able to solve and how are you able to solve it that somebody might be able to take and go oh that's a helpful tip um that's a good question i'm trying to think i think musically actually I, I kind of have figured out like in terms of like engineering my own music i figured out a system slowly but surely um when i 
did it, I'd say even like a few years ago, sometimes it would take me a month to try to like work out like these little problems. And so like what I've developed now is just kind of a strategy for engineering. And you know, it it's hit and miss. Sometimes it does take more or sure. less, but typically I'll record the song and then I'll let it sit. And then the next day I just do like all of the like trivial stuff. I cut, I add fades, I take, you know, I pick the takes, I put a light mix on it. And then the next day it's like, I want a version one, like as if it had to come out, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. And then I sit on that and I just won't listen to it. I'll bounce it and won't listen to it. And then the next day, usually, you know, I finish V1 and I'm like, this is horrible. But the next day I listen, I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. Sure. And then I get to V2 and then V3. And, you know, I, I kind of developed where it's like make one version a day, try to like knock out like a raw version of it. But then I don't know when you do that V1 for me, it like takes the pressure off of it having to be perfect because I just tell myself mm. you're just making a rough version of it. But oftentimes because I relieve myself of that pressure, um, V1 turns out like way better because I'm not so hyper focused on making it perfect that first run. And so sure. I'd say um, with stuff like that where you're, I don't know, like I'm a pretty big perfectionist, just like having some sort of structure, even if you don't follow it exactly every time, it can just help to take the pressure off and um, actually make you more productive. Yeah, I think learning when to step away from something is really big. Yes. But I think that's the case with like arguments, right? Like if you're in an argument with your partner or whatever, a lot of times it's just because you're not in the right headspace in that moment. You know what I mean? Like there are other, uh, cause you, this is what'll happen is you'll be disagreeing about one small dumb thing. And now all of a sudden there's personal attacks from both sides yeah, about whatever. Sinking, right. Yeah, because no. you're just like mentally exhausted and not there. And people tend to want to like, we got to solve every problem right now. Like, you know, the whole saying of like, never go to bed angry. It's like, well, but a lot of times that's the better case, you know, and it's the same <laughs> yeah, way with like any problem, yeah. right? It's like, if you're just getting to a point where you're like emotionally getting upset about this problem, now's not the time to solve it anymore. Yep. You know, it's the time to be able to walk away and be okay with the fact that you didn't finish this thing right now, because otherwise it's going to take way longer and it's not going to turn out good anyways, because you're not right. coming into it with a clear head. Yeah. No, finding that line is really tricky. And then I always like play devil's advocate with myself because I agree with that. But then sometimes I'm like, oh, but I'm being lazy. But it's like yeah. also just knowing yourself and being like, this isn't lazy. This is just what you need to do. You need to go take a walk. You need to stop listening to the song. You've listened to it 30 times in a row right. and you keep finding more things. It's like those things don't really exist. You just you got to walk away. But then I feel lazy. Right. But yeah, yeah. It's just it's finding that balance, which is a moving target, but I've been trying to get better at. Do you ever struggle with the like personal success side of like, I guess here's an example for me. When I was really young, I made more money than any of my friends. Like sure. I was always very successful in that realm. Sure. And when I opened my store, I knew I was going to not make very much money. And that was like totally okay with me. Like I knew it going into it. Money wasn't the point. It was totally fine. As I've seen myself get older, still not money driven, but it has been kind of hard to watch all these other people I knew that were like still working McDonald's jobs when I met them and we were the same age Yep. and seeing them make way more money than me by now mm -hmm. is like a, man, that, that sometimes I get down on myself, like, what am I doing? And I know I'm still doing what I want to be doing, right. but it's a hard comparison thing because we're on totally different paths, but the numbers of those types of things that, um, like tactile success, lack of better word, but that success that you can very much measure and is right in front of you, they're more successful than you at. I mean, with you too, right? Like you don't make a lot of money doing what you're doing. Their ceiling is really high, mm -hmm. but you currently don't. If you would have stayed in a regular career path, you probably would make more money than you do yeah. now. Oh, absolutely. How do you not get down on yourself with that? How do you stay positive through it? Um, I don't know. I think like, well, I actually watched this video like on minimalism and that oh. kind of like helps having that mindset. Like it's not like how much money you make. It's just like what you enjoy doing. Like, and I enjoy a lot of things that are like cheap to do and free to do. So like money isn't, um, like a ton of, isn't a huge, huge issue in terms of like my life having like pleasure in it. Like I like doing a lot of things that are just free. So that's one thing that definitely sure. helps me. And I think the other thing is just, um, uh, I'm just trying to think of like how to phrase it. I don't know. Like, I just, I, this is really what I want to do. And it's like one of those things where it's like, I know I could rejoin corporate America and like make money and stuff. Um, but I would just much rather do this. And this yeah. is like an opportunity too, where it's like with music for, you know, for example, um, there's an opportunity to like have passive income and things like that. So like, I think the dream of just like having like consistent income just there and being able to just have like a little more freedom with my time so I can do things that I want to do like that 
that aspiration, I guess, keeps me going. Yeah. Um, and I try to not compare myself because, yeah, we're all on different paths and stuff like that. And I'm very happy for my friends that are doing well. And I'm always I always tell them I'm jealous. Like, I'm very yeah. jealous of my friends that are very passionate about, like, the jobs that they do nine to five or whatever their hours are. Right. Because yeah. that's awesome. They love it and they make good money doing it. And I really wish I had that. But for me, it's always been music and entertainment. And that's all I've ever wanted to do. And so um, I just remind myself of that we actually I mean, we're very similar in that sense. They're doing what they've always wanted to do. It's just mine is a very different path. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't pay. It pays in different ways. I like to yeah. I like to ask people just like when I meet people, if money didn't matter, how would you choose to spend your time? Because for me, I genuinely feel like I would spend my time pretty much how I spend it. Yep. You know what I mean? Like I would be less stressed out probably because I wouldn't have to worry about dealing with contracts or this, that or whatever, but I'd know I would still do the show because yep. I get to meet tons of really cool people this way. Like, and I, I have conversations I otherwise never would be able to have. I get to travel all over the place. I would definitely still paint murals. It's like my favorite thing to do, you right. know, like my lifestyle wouldn't change drastically outside of stress. And that's when I know it's like, Oh, cool. Because if I did make more money, I would really only care to make enough to be able to retire. And if I could retire, I would end up doing the same thing that I'm currently doing anyways. Mm -hmm. And I would be willing to retire as young as possible with like as little money as I possibly needed. So realistically, I'd be in the same place. Yep. So when I look at it from that standpoint, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not blowing it. Everything's yeah. good. <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> I think the same way. I'm like, if I were like a millionaire and like I had tons of money doing what I'm doing, I'd be doing the exact same thing. Right. I would maybe like well my cars broke down i would right. buy i would buy a car that's a little more reliable like there's things like that that i would do to like just relieve stress but i wouldn't like overindulge in anything i'd basically live the same life which i think is like in and of itself kind of an answer to like the money issue totally yeah, yeah. it's just right like switching the perspective you know in your head about what your goals are because yep. money was never the point anyways right. so when the it's just hard when you're like oh well i want my stream numbers to be this or i want my whatever but really if you are full-time doing this and that's your life you kind of already are living the dream right you know even living if you want the, more yeah. out of it you are currently doing it exactly and trying yeah. to keep that perspective is challenging at times especially when things aren't going well because there are lots of like ebbs and flows but um yeah, it's a, it's important to have. Yeah. Um, in order to be successful on the internet, uh, you have to be ahead of the curve, which means you have to not know what to do. I think that's like a big problem is people go, they try to look at other successful people and imitate them, which if imitating somebody that you look up to is what triggers you to start, awesome that's usually the case yeah. right yeah, like that sure. you listen to a, a, a song and you're like i want to play guitar now because of this and you yeah. try to learn that one song like that's totally fine to imitate people in that kind of way it's an inspiration however if you want to make your own name for yourself yes i get it you have to be yourself everyone beats that topic i know that yep. but you have to be willing to go where other people haven't gone yet where there isn't a template yet right so like with tiktok when that came out i missed that wave tiktok's at the end of it in my opinion i'm trying but like the people who crushed it on tiktok are the people who hopped on there before tiktok was tiktok yep. you know what i mean and that's that happens with other things granted these other apps pop up and then they just go nowhere and so you know you you run the risk of like missing out on that but sure. the people who have the confidence to put themselves out there on new things when they don't have a template in front of them for what's going to work those are the ones that pop off and youtube as much as that has been around since like i think it came out in 2003 or something You're right around like there yeah. a long time ago youtube shorts man like everybody who's been wondering because i keep posting my like where i'm at with my youtube on my instagram mm -hmm. And people will keep asking, what platform is that? Because it's like, I just passed 800,000 views. Nice. And they're like, what platform? YouTube, dude. Yes. And it's not long form as much as I wish it was. It's YouTube Shorts. You're on YouTube Shorts right now, right? Yes. Yeah, I started on YouTube Shorts. Um, I was a little hesitant because I'm like, ah, it's just another place to post. But I'm already making the content for TikTok and Instagram. So I'm like, I'm just going to start throwing some up. And um performance is definitely very hit and miss but i've seen my subscriber uh number grow like exponentially compared to what it was prior uh it's pretty much explicitly from youtube short so i started out posting like three days a week and it was going okay and then i started doing five days a week and then it started doing really really well and it's like yeah some videos get 100 views some get like eight thousand. but what i've really noticed is i think my subscriber count since i started is up like 16 or 1700 
since I started doing that. And Which it's been about a year, yeah. maybe a year and a half. But mm -hmm. before that, I really wasn't growing much on YouTube because like I didn't have a lot of long form to post because like the Healy stuff, I did long form for a while, but I feel like short form just does better with it's it. It's more digestible because yes. it's funny in short form. If it's awkward comedy like that, if it's too long, it's it's no longer funny it's just like, yeah once it gets to yeah be a little bit lengthy i just there was kind of a fall off and then that hurts like the algorithm too because the yeah. completion percentage is a lot like smaller and well, so i feel like successful people they don't look for excuses right like anybody there's always an excuse why something's not going to work and i'm so i like i try to keep this show generally positive even though like i'll go on monologues where i'm being negative or whatever but one thing that i've heard people go on and on and on and on and on about and i get it is that instant Instagram doesn't show me to my followers. I know that. We all know that. Like, okay, what are you going to do about it? Like, that's the question, right? That's just, we can, we can bitch about it, but that is going to be the case. Right. So why is Instagram not showing you to your followers? Because all of these platforms are now showing more suggested content. Is that paid sometimes? Sure. But in general, it's showing content that is suggested. So how do you get suggested? That's what we need to be looking at because it's not going to go back the opposite direction. Instagram's still not going to show you to your followers. Like that's there's like a that's, button now where you can click to like look at who you're following, but people have to actively do that. And know yeah, that and no one does that. Yeah, no, yeah, I never I know do it either. Mean. But yes, right. But like otherwise, it defaults agreed. back. Yep, it it's will. not like you can even change that setting permanently. No. But but anyways, what I'm getting at is you have to look at where the opportunity is. Successful people will look at that and go, okay, well, so what? Where is the opportunity? Right. And being in suggested content is the opportunity. Now, is it easy to get on the for you page? No. Where is it the easiest to get on the for you page? YouTube Shorts. I think that, so at this think, point, yeah. yeah because, As a new like upstart, yes. Right, yeah. because you look at Instagram and almost everybody on Instagram posts, even if it's just family pictures, right? So mm -hmm. like the out, like what you're seeing in your feed is flooded by every user. TikTok, most people don't post. So it's not flooded by every user. It's flooded by the creators, which is a smaller percentage. YouTube is a way smaller percentage yet. I got to think less than 1% of people with the YouTube, YouTube account or who have the YouTube app ever post on YouTube. Right. So it's a way, way, way less saturated market. Is it still oversaturated? Yup, but way less than the other ones. Mm -hmm. Dude, last I checked, 96% of my views don't come from people that subscribe to me on my YouTube shorts. And it's becoming more obvious to me because I had those people come to my store this past week asking about a, a clip that the algorithm is actually showing it to people locally in my area too. That does happen. Like yes. I've had a lot of people say, yeah, you pop up on my YouTube all the time. And I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. I thought it was just like internationally going wherever. Nah, dude, if you, if you want to blow up right now organically, I strongly believe YouTube shorts is the space. Well, and YouTube is nice too, because, um, they're short and long form content and it's known for, well, it's known for long form, right? So that mm -hmm. conversion is a lot easier. You know, for example, um, like on Instagram, if I'm trying to get someone to go like listen to a song, they have to click the link in my bio, which is going to take them to a different app and they're going to leave Instagram, which Instagram doesn't want people leaving Instagram, right. nor do the people want to because they're just sitting scrolling to get them to leap takes a lot. Whereas like on YouTube, people can click my profile and they'll see my long form and short form and the long form is where the full song exists. And so that conversion is just a lot easier and people don't have to jump from app to app. They don't have to do multiple clicks because every time you click, there's a fall off. And so that's why I'm an advocate as well for YouTube shorts is it's just kind of all in one. And now they have YouTube music too. So like in my case, people can jump right over to the music. Um, yeah seamlessly which is slash nice. you just obviously need full-length music videos like it's just becoming more and more obvious somebody yeah. sees the youtube short they need to see the full-length music yeah video. i need to get on that yeah dude spend all your money on some producers to help you with that stuff because uh -huh. a whole different beast but like clearly that is somewhere that you need to be besides music video content right now where are you at as far as what you're trying to learn where do you think your biggest areas of opportunity that sounds like a job interview but you know what it i mean does, like what are the things okay. that, <laughs> what are the things that you're trying to work on currently um, I think the things I'm trying to work on currently are just, um, getting more efficient in general, I think is like mm -hmm. one thing that I try to do. Cause I'm like a one man team. I have my fiance who films everything, but outside and she's awesome. And I really, really appreciate that. But outside of that, I do everything. So I'm always looking for ways without sacrificing quality. How can I just get more efficient? And so I'm always looking at that with like audio engineering. Um, I'm looking at, uh, doing that with like marketing, um, and also just like content 
ideation. Like I do a lot of that. Like every single month I write down ideas for like Healy's and non Healy's content and then try to implement it and work it in. And so I think I'm, that's another thing that I'm working on is just like, how can I build um, something that's a little more holistic and not just like Healy's music? I'd like to kind of fill that void in between. Um, and so that's another thing that I think is an area of opportunity is um, making people like maybe me as like a person more instead of just like the content or the music because i think you can just build stronger connections when people like like you for you yeah well i think people have so much more choice now and who they want to support yeah they want to feel some kind of emotional connection to them you know what i mean like think of all the times that you see somebody post a screenshot on their like instagram as an example of like a celebrity or somebody liked their post Mm -hmm. and they're like jazzed about it yep like i did that tony hawk liked a couple of mine and i was like oh my god that is super like i was so hyped you know what i mean and now i permanently i are already thought Tony Hawk was a legend in the man. Now I like Tony Hawk way more. Yep. I watch all of his posts always now. Definitely didn't do that before just because all he did was like it. But it was yeah. because I felt a little bit of a personal connection to it. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. I just had someone message me. I think it was last week. And they uh, they said, it's my birthday. All I want is a shout out video. And like I have cameo. I could have like sent them to cameo, which I, I do at times. But it was just like one where I didn't have any info. All I had to say was happy birthday. So I put on my Heelys and just right here just filmed a quick video and they shared it and they were so excited and i just was like it was something that didn't take a lot of time but it made i think hopefully a pretty strong connection and it was something that like i enjoyed doing like it was fun to do and so um i think that that's a huge part too that i'm always working on is just finding ways to connect with people more personally because we're all people yeah i mean well i think uh, one thing too is just like take the opportunity when it's easy Mm -hmm. like obviously everybody we should all be philanthropists give away all of our money and like go pick up trash all day long every day i get it like we could all be better people than we currently are all right yeah. um but if you anytime it's just easy to just do the nice thing you know it's like the opening the door when someone's walking behind you like that's you don't even think about it it's like very obviously i'm going to do that mm-hmm. but i like to think anytime there's something in front of me where it's i don't have to get anything out of it but if it's relatively easy for me to do i'm going to try to try to do that every time Right. And that stuff compounds, you know, and I, you never do things with the intent of like, this is going to come back to you, but it almost always does, dude. Yeah, right. It feels like karma is pretty real. Yeah. yeah. If you even doing that video for somebody, right. Well then they shared it, you know, so it did get more views anyways, because yeah. they got shown to other people, but right. it got shown to other people in a really cool light. Like mm-hmm. you didn't do that for that reason. You did this not out of the kindness yeah, of your heart. It she asked yeah, she exactly. Nice. Which yeah. is true. Yeah. But like I said, <laughs> then it ends up coming back to you anyways. Yep. Like that, uh, I think more people need to realize that. I'm going to give you something, if you don't mind. Oh, that'd be super cool. I got some chocolate. Oh, I do like chocolate. Have you ever had Mayana chocolate? I don't think I have, but I'm excited to try it. Dude, it's from your parents' area. It's from Spooner. No kidding. Not You're not from Spooner specifically, but no. yeah, the factory is in Spooner, Wisconsin. No kidding. It's America's best chocolate. Swear to God. Like, and, and not just saying it really is. Like, It's the type of chocolate when I, I have one of those way too often now because they sent me a bunch. Yeah. I You take a bite and it's like a, you close your eyes and you're just like, wow. That was really good. Yeah, and they have a bunch <laughs> of different ones. Um, and those are the mini bars. But anyways, Mayana Chocolate. You can go to MayanaChocolate.com. Use promo code PASSION for 25% off. Um, but they make all kinds of different ones. But it's it's crazy good. All the all the chocolates is sourced in uh, South America. Super cool. And Thank they sell you. it in other places too. But yeah, you got you to gotta have that. You got to enjoy that. All right. It's to this point of the show. I always ask everybody to share a story of a unique experience that happened to them that they're really grateful for, but it only happened because they chose their to pursue their passion for Heelys. So do you have one for me? Yes. Or um, music, not specifically. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no. You're good. Um, just trying to think. So I'd say one that I had recently that was super, super cool is I got to open up um, for Thumpasaurus, which is they do like kind of like funky indie rock stuff. Oh, it's, cool. it's super cool. They have a whole production when they um, perform. And um, I, I have some connections like with First Avenue and they own the venue that they were performing at Amsterdam uh, oh, Barn Hall cool. in St. Paul. So they reached out to me for it. So that was super cool. Wow. And I didn't know how many people were going to show up. You know, I'm not I don't really have a grasp um, on like ticket sales or anything like that. And I show up and set up my little merch table and stuff and I, you know, I figured I'm the opener. No one's really going to be here for me and stuff. And it ended up being like pretty much full. I think there were like three, 400 people there. Whoa. Um, and once again, they're there to see Thumposaurus. But as soon as I even walked on stage, everyone was just like clapping and cheering. You didn't super, Healy super on stage. 
No, I no one even knew I healed until I broke them out halfway through really? the sets, and people still were just going crazy. So it was oh, one of those full circle things where sure. it's like people like me for the music, and then I get to supplement with the healies, so it's kind of like memorable. And um, I always do this thing at shows where. Um, I try to make like a tunnel, like, you know, like when you're a little kid playing soccer, they make the tunnel with arms and then yeah. everyone goes through it. All the kids do and you cheer. Yeah. I, I got one of those and it was probably like 30, 40 feet long oh, and I was healing through it. Oh, sick. and it was just one of those moments where it's like we did that on like the last song and everyone's just cheering and people yeah. were singing along and it's like, this is kind of what it's all for. And yeah. it's like one of those things where like most of the people there didn't know who I was, but I still just kept like putting myself out there and I took the risk opening up for like a non hip hop group and it just went well and it was fun yeah dude good for you for having the the confidence to go into uh that you have to be willing to put yourself out there to be successful and you have to like take the risks in that kind of a way to ever like reach people genuine in a genuine way but it's it's hard to do that because what if nobody claps what if nobody's into it you know what i mean and, I, and that crossed my mind it's like right. th- we don't i don't make similar music to thumpasaurus whatsoever sure. i like their music it's super cool but we're just very very different and yeah. um So I had no idea what to expect, but it was like pretty much all positive. I still have like friends that I met, like that were just in the audience at that show and stuff. And so, um, yeah, like a risky thing, but also just like a super fun thing to try. And, um, I definitely want to keep putting myself out there because of how that went, especially. Yeah. Well, and that's like the other organic way, right? Like right now, internet is the organic way to be discovered musically for most people. Right. But the old school way is performing in front of people that, you know, don't know you like, And that's the best way. I interviewed uh, Sunreal. I'll keep the story super brief because I've told it a million times. At Amsterdam. Nice. Um, which he's my all-time favorite music artist. And he was coming through the area. He's from Vancouver. Yep. Um, but but anyways, his opener was this rapper, Soul, who's from uh, Seattle. I know who Soul is. You do? Yeah, I know Sunreal and Soul. I don't know them personally, but I know their music. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah, I used to listen to Soul a ton. Dope, Yeah, dude. like back yeah. in like late high school, yeah, early cool. college, yeah. Well, yeah, so I, I interviewed him. After I interviewed Sunreal, I interviewed um, Soul in their like tour van. Yeah. And did just like a short one or whatever. But he, on stage during his set, he was like, this is how to discover new music. Go to shows and then find people like live. And that's how you're going to find your favorite music artists. And that's like why I love going on tour. And I was like, wow, I've never played music. So I never really thought about it that way. But Mm -hmm. like, absolutely. Like, that's so sick, dude. So like getting the opportunity to do that. I hope you get to do that way more and more. It's hard, especially like when you have a partner and everything. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to be gone. You don't want to just go on tour and dip out because you have other things and other priorities to take care of. But Mm -hmm. hopefully more and more of those opportunities come up for you. Thank so you. moving forward now, you're going to be dropping a bunch of singles until an album originally or eventually comes out when there's enough demand for it. So we're going to expect a song every month um, over on James G for Spotify. All the music things is just going to be James G, right? Yep. Yep. All, all one word, James G. Yep. And then James makes music on all the other platforms. On social media. Yep. Cool. What's the main platform? If somebody was going to reach out, where should they go? Um, I'd say just Instagram. Yeah, it's probably the best one. Or if you want to reach out for any sort of like inquir- inquiries or anything, inquiries, inquiries. I think it's the same. Either way, Either whatever way sounds cooler. Yeah, inquiries. That sounds cool right now. Yeah, that's uh, I, uh, JamesMakesMusic.net is my website, and I have a form you can fill out if you want to send a message um, about anything. Uh, cool. Otherwise, Instagram, whatever works. Dope, dude. Well, thank you so much for having me. Let's go make. Let's go get a clip. Let's go get like skate. We should do like a whole montage of just skate clips in general. But I feel like you should put out a video part of just like your tricks, like a, like a bunch of them. You know how like a skateboard video part is two minutes with a song and it's all the best clips. Like I feel like you need to have a Healy part out on the internet. I do like be- I do best ofs and they get like to like a minute ish because that's kind of the limit for like reels and like short form. I used to do like longer, longer ones, but it- I'm probably due for a new one. It's been a while. Dude, I'm saying a full length one. You need to have a full length, like two and a half minute, like to a thump or like whatever. Like you got to right. have a full video part that comes out online. I would I would promote it to the eight people that listen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much for having me, man. This yeah, was, likewise. This was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Appreciate yeah. you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.